Hey, this is Extraterrestrial here, uh, bringing you a Halo 5 tutorial today for smooth motion inscripting. As, as dorky as that sounds, anybody who's spent a lot of time in Forge and has tried to move anything with the basic scripting knows how much of a challenge it can be to get it to be smooth and uh, uh, worth doing in the first place. I'm going to just talk through this and probably suck at it, but you know what? I want to get this done so that you all can start working on projects of your own. And I suck at finishing projects, so I'm just going to try to go through this in one or two takes. First we have here just an example of the most basic form of motion for those who aren't familiar. So you can see the, the very uh, you know difficult challenge we're up against when we're, when we're trying to do this type of motion. The most basic form is just to take a script on an object and tell it to move X number of units over a period of time. And as you'll see, that can be kind of choppy and, and the game engine or something just makes it hesitate every so often. Um, depending on your internet connection, it can actually be very smooth uh, occasionally or uh, always very choppy, sometimes catastrophically choppy. With this angle, you can see it a bit more. Here it is at, uh, I think, double the speed. It's much more obvious. Now, it should be mentioned that if you want to move an object very fast over a large distance, uh, this method can look smooth because it's smoothed out over a large area. Or if you go very slow, that can also smooth out that basic motion. But if you... That can only go a thousand units, and you get very basic... Uh, motion out of it which is very choppy you can get slightly smoother uh, motion if you go with the option of actually using a timer interval uh, to just instruct via a script brain instruct your object to move every uh, you know fraction of a second as you'll see what we're doing here first is just telling our brain to only exist when we want it to and it is going to be the thing that's doing the instructing of the movement and when it is spawned in it has always run unchecked and allows us to uh, tell it to move a smaller number of units in every so often so the combined motion of repeating that over and over again gives you a similar type of movement as you'll see, that can be slightly smoother, but really does suffer from the same problem as our most basic uh, form of just uh, move offsets. It's hard to tell if that's any smoother. It might be a little bit smoother. You do get more options if you use the second uh, second technique that we just demonstrated. Now, to really get where we need to be, we'll combine these techniques to actually move a chase object that our true object is going to follow. The way we're implementing it for this particular test is to give them each a label and have the script brain instruct the object to always follow its chase object. So that's what this first script is doing here. Every 0.05 seconds, it's going to try to grab, uh, you know, go to the location of the chase object. Now, because 0.05 is so different from 0.8, it's so small by comparison, it's going to be interrupted. We're going to let this script... Uh, be interrupted by itself and every time it does that it is smoothing out by only doing a small portion of the trip this introduces a delay that is basically the secret to this smooth motion and then those are there's just going through the scripts to show um, that it's telling the chase object to move um, rather than the box itself you'll see this the green box moved into place and then when we press the button it can seem like it's suffering from the same issue but that's just relative to the other pieces when it's by itself 
you'll notice it is very smooth against the backdrop of the red lines. You can see its chase object ever so slightly there does suffer from the ebb and flow of the game engine hesitating, but the object following it is uh, much, much more smoother. Um, perhaps not perfect, but, but very, very smooth. Here's some examples, obviously, with the pelican uh, as our object rather than uh, a simple block. Because the pelican is one object, this makes it very easy to implement uh, motion for it. But really what we want to do is, is create a little bit more complex motion where we can create a sequence of events. And to do that, we're going to set up several different waypoints, which are uh, just simply duplicating our blocker objects that we've been using as our chase object and giving those their own labels and then having a script brain instruct our chase object to move to those in a sequence. So here we have a message alpha received. It's going to go through uh, four actions in one script, is, which is the maximum for one script. You could always set up more waypoints by using multiple scripts and a lot more advanced implementation of this type of stuff. But uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, four waypoints or four different places to move is plenty. You'll see what we're doing is we're setting a, a specific amount of time for each one. And that is going to create the opportunity for smooth transition of, of uh, velocity between them. So smooth deceleration, smooth acceleration uh, when it goes from one point, one waypoint to the next. Okay, so here it goes. See, it slows down, and if you if you set up waypoints that create a uh, kind of realistic for our futuristic fantasy world here of Halo, um, you know what what seems like a, an appropriate type of path for your object, whether it be something flying like a pelican or or anything that you can come up with you can program your waypoints and uh, your motion characteristics. And, and, and it should be pointed out that waypoints are not the only way that you can instruct these objects to, to you know, choose their paths. It is simply uh, a, a simple one to demonstrate. So here we're going to actually jump on top by giving it a slight delay before it takes off. Now notice, this is a phased object. This is not normal physics or, or fixed physics. And the player is not jostled around or uh, would not otherwise know that he was moving if he could not see his surroundings. Now if you jump, you do, uh, I think, move slightly. And if the ship is decelerating, then you know you could fly off if you jump. Now here we have a, just a, uh, one more example of this technique showing that if you want multi-pieced uh, objects to move together, that you can accomplish that. We've given one of these objects a label, and then we're going to group them all together and select them uh, via a scripting option rather than giving them all labels or all scripts. Now in the objects list here for our move offset command, we want to move user alpha, but we also want to move all the siblings, so everything that's grouped with. Now I've purposely set that alpha up to be the parent in this case, so all we need is group siblings add. But if we don't weld, here's what happens when we enable the scripting. All the pieces, all 64 pieces, want to go to the same point rather than seeing themselves as members of a larger object. 
So that's really why welding is important in this scenario. You want to weld them all together, now they move together. You can see that they maintain absolutely no spaces in between the pieces, and uh, that should maintain throughout this uh, exercise here. See, it moves swiftly and smoothly across the map like a board cube. Ooh, there's an idea. As it delivers itself to the other side of the test area. So the final piece, and uh, something that enables a whole other kind of uh, level of, of options to this if you need it, is beyond 64 pieces, you really do need to set up a cage of invisible blockers with a chase object that it will follow. So in this case, we have a more complex shuttle that is more than 64 pieces. So it's set to normal physics and placed inside a, a cage of invisible blocker walls. Make sure to keep a little bit of space in between all of the walls and make sure that the spacing of your object works. And then by instructing the cage to follow the waypoints, or the cage to follow the chase objects with which follows the waypoints, you get smooth motion for a large complex object that can be delivered across the map dynamically. Now watch again as it lands the transition of motion is smooth. Transition of velocities. We're also wiping the slate clean so that the ship has a place to land, so that's something to consider as you drop objects into a map that players may already be in. You may need to move those players out of the way. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, there are all kinds of options and uh, possibilities with this technique, and I hope that all of you will uh, explore this and show everyone else what you can come up with.